Hi students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the acid-base reactions topic. This, uh, this particular video is video number six and we're going to be talking a little bit more about neutralization reactions. So we've already previously looked at neutralization reactions and started that whole process of identifying that neutralization reactions occur when we have uh, a neutral product, that is water being produced. And this occurs in a reaction between an acidic substance and a basic substance. Usually in the formation of water, a salt will also be produced. The salt is the ionic product of the anion donated by the acid and the cation from the base. In particular, what we want to look at is the fact that the hydrogen ion or the proton from the acid is going to link in with the hydroxide ions from the base to form water. So if we were to uh, summarize this and we had a look at this in a previous video, the net ionic equation is the hydrogen ion coming from the acid and the hydroxide ion coming from the base and these are forming uh, together water molecules. So this is our net ionic equation for a neutralization reaction and uh, it's the reaction that we find very commonly when different acids and bases are put together. Neutralization reactions are very common reactions and they occur everywhere pretty much. Um, some of the examples that you need to I guess be able to be aware of and perhaps you might explore a few of these a little bit more uh, in class are uh, some everyday applications that we uh, either experience ourselves or have available around our homes uh, and also some more broader industrial applications of different types of uh, neutralization reactions. So one of the most common ones that can that we can discuss is the neutralization of stomach acids. So in our stomachs uh, we produce hydrochloric acid of quite a high concentration and this uh, is very important for protein digestion. In fact, one of the things that we look at is the fact that pH is actually a very important component of a lot of our different um, body systems. Different types of biochemical reactions have uh, optimum levels of performance at different pH values and not all of them at a neutral pH of 7. So therefore, we um, somewhere like the stomach where protein digestion occurs, this needs to occur or the enzymes that are part of protein digestion occur when the stomach uh, is a very strongly acidic environment. So therefore, we secrete hydrochloric acid, quite concentrated hydrochloric acid in order to achieve this. Now, the problem is that sometimes this acid can build or can be secreted at the wrong time or because of the sorts of foods that we're consuming, these acid levels can get very high. If we're going to um, control that or regulate that or, or um, address that concern, we need some sort of a substance that's going to neutralize that. And that's why we will often take something um, known as an antacid. Uh, think of it as an anti-acid, so something that's going to counteract the effect of an acid. We now know that an anti-acid is a base. And when the base reacts with the acid, it neutralizes it to form carbon dioxide or to form water. For some of these, of course, carbon dioxide is also going to be a product. And if one of the key components of our antacid is a carbonate or a hydrogen carbonate, such as sodium, um, then it is going to produce carbon dioxide as well as the uh, water. If we were to pick one of these other ones, such as, say, magnesium hydroxide, which a lot of these sorts of substances, uh, which is contained in a lot of these sorts of antacid substances, then we can write our equation out here, magnesium hydroxide, and that is going to, that could be in a solid form, or usually we'll put it in water, so it'll be in aqueous form, um, and that will form magnesium chloride, which will be in, oops, which will be in solution, and uh, also water molecules, and there'll be two water molecules for this particular one. We'll just balance that out a little bit. As I said, not just the stomach has um, a, a sensitivity to a particular pH value, but so do many other systems in our body and mouth where we start the digestion process, blood, uh, pH is also uh, needs to be maintained within a narrow range. Uh, and of course, there are other examples uh, of cooking 
uh, in our kitchens where we may use acids in our cooking, bases in our cooking, in order to um, change the flavours uh, and sometimes even to produce carbon dioxide to uh, produce bubbles, fluffy uh, doughs and things like that. Now, in neutralisation reactions are also very important industrially. Um, gardeners will take advantage of the fact that different types of plants grow either optimally or not at all in certain types of um, soils based on their pH. Uh, so some plants are very sensitive to the, the pH balance and we, you may have also looked at uh, plants like hydrangeas in the past uh, whose flowers uh, can change colour depending on the nature of the pH of the soil. Uh, it's probably important to have a look at one or two examples in a little bit more detail, but for the purpose of this video, just another little list of some of the things that you might look at. Preparation of different types of fabrics, synthetic fabrics uh, involve neutralisation reactions. The preparation of esters, and these are components uh, in foods, food colouring and food flavouring, and also in perfumes and fragrances. Uh, the treatment of wastewater, so um, how water is treated before it reaches our taps, can also involve very important measurements and maintenance of pH balance and also the cleaning of uh, industrial spills. All of these have some component of neutralisation reactions associated with them and it's probably worth having a look at a couple of examples just so you're able to pull those out if you need to discuss them at any point. And thanks for watching.